Hey everyone, it's Jesse from Project FDL. I wanted to give you all an update and let you know we will be back very, very soon. Uh, so we've gone through the prototyping process with our friends at LDO Motors and we've been able to order our first round of production parts from them, uh, which will be due in, in a couple weeks. We have actually started going through the waiting list of blasters that we had and contacting those people, seeing what colors they want in their blasters and getting that ready. Uh, we will be opening the shop up for bundles slash electronics kits orders very soon as well. Real excited. So the biggest thing that we were able to accomplish is these pretty things. I know if you guys follow us on social media, um, you've probably seen these a bunch, but these are our new Crux motors. Um, so we actually had these custom designed. I designed this, the can, the exact size and shape of it. Uh, and the format in which your flywheel mounts to the top is all custom for us. As well as our logo on there, which is so cool. That's a huge dream of mine to always have a custom motor with the Project FDL uh, logo on it. So stay tuned. Follow us on social media, either Facebook or Instagram or Twitter as well. Um, and you can kind of keep up to date with what's going on there. So what I really wanted to show you was all of the stuff that I've been working on in the time that we've kind of been on our little bit of hiatus. Uh, so the last video I think I did, we talked about starting a Patreon. Uh, and for a cool Patreon project, um, I did something really cool and I started getting really into high capacity rival sort of stuff. Um, so let me show you some of the stuff that I've worked on. So this is Pip and Pat. The two go hand in hand, uh, and this is sort of the evolution of a big project that I was working on, um, and it evolved into this. It started very different, and I'll get into that in a second, um, but PAC is a blower-based uh, rival tank. Uh, it blows balls through the tube naturally up to PIP. So PIP is a fully integrated blaster. PIP is actually the brains that talks to PAC. Uh, and tells PAC to run the fans and the agitator. Um, and then PIP is a small, very small, compact uh, brushless blaster um, with speed control uh, select fire. Um, but before I get too far into PIP and PAC, I kind of want to show you guys like the evolution of this because this is not where I intended to go when I started this project. Um, let me show you. So about a year and a half ago, I built one of these. So what this actually is, is a proton pack. Um, you guys know out of darts and he has his proton pack. So I was able to get a beta version of his proton pack. Um, I outfitted this to a, uh, the tank from a weed sprayer. Um, and I did a bunch of modification to like the blower motor and the agitator and a few different things. Uh, I had a ton of fun with that and it worked really well and that hooked up into my friend Samus. So Samus is the original HIR version of the FDL3. So there was a hose that came out of here, hooked up into Samus and she could go full auto. <laughs> So my idea was something a little like this. So this looks like just a bunch of prototype menagerie, right? Except what this is, is there's actually one, two, three flywheel cages on here where you hook one, two, three hoses up to. And this is where this project sort of started from. This, the intention of this was to be the kind of the arm cannon and I wanted to create like a wave beam type thing. Um, so what this will actually do, it actually adjusts and the cages can swivel in and out. So the idea here was to be able to create a spread of balls that could move in and out. Um, and because it is Arduino based, this is all brushless motors, there are a ton of crux motors on this thing. Um, they can also cycle around in a circle, so you can shoot like a ball from here, a ball from there, a ball from there, and you can make a circle as well as spread them in and out. So that's where this project started, and I think that I succeeded in doing what I wanted. 
And this is what it turned out to. Here's a good example of what this looks like. Go ahead. Holy crap. We actually brought it to my daughter's school. We actually, prior to the pandemic, when all the kids were still going to the school naturally, uh, every Wednesday morning we would actually go in and talk to a small group of kids uh, in their STEM room at her school. So one Wednesday morning we actually brought this in. Uh, we had the three tanks with us uh, and we tried it in their gym. And that was this. So that was super fun. Um, so once I finished that, I really enjoyed that, but I kind of wanted to take it like a step further. And it became very clear that you could take one of these cages off um, and then either have like two of them, or maybe you do two and two, like one on both side and then four, like there's a lot of different combinations that can start happening to this if you start breaking it down into its basic components. And that is how Pip started. So Pip, if we look at him again, is really just one of the cages off of that thing, which I don't have a name for. I've tried to find lots of different names. I think we ended up on just like the monstrosity or something. And it's pretty clear why that's the case. And it kind of evolved from there. I never really expected to have like another product that we were gonna sell and like this is not a cheap thing. I don't expect to sell a lot of them. What this really was, was a project for me to keep fresh and learn lots of new things. So all of the, like, the FDL1, the FDL2, and the FDL3 uh, were all designed in AutoCAD. Which if any of you guys have used AutoCAD, is kind of an old CAD software. And it's not officially intended to be used for 3D modeling. I made it do that, and that was really great. Um, but I actually moved over and I started to learn Fusion 360. This was all designed on Fusion 360, so it was PIP and PAC and all of that, and I've really dug into it, and I really, really enjoy it. And if any of you are thinking about getting into learning CAD, I highly suggest that you at least look at Fusion 360 as an option. So a couple of the other things that I really wanted to do, on the FDL3, there are actually two boards that sit back here, and one that sits up here. What I really wanted to do was combine all three of those boards, and I think ultimately down the road it would be really neat to have a single board uh, that takes care of all of that, and it's something that could be like manufactured really easy. Uh, what I did on PIP, so PIP can actually can actually come apart, right? So there's these kind of swivelly swivelly hose adapters that can go on there. It means that this can turn around, which is really neat. So Pip, if you open him up, okay, once you open him up, this whole top shell should just very easily come off. So the whole top of this is one single board. Now granted there are things that socket into place here, so this is sort of baby steps towards an official full board blaster. Um, but everything up here controls the whole blaster. Underneath here the ESC sit, um, but everything's very compact. Um, and one thing that I also did is this officially has all metric hardware on it. I know a lot of the international people really are going to be happy about that. Um, not a single screw on this bites into plastic at all. So like if you've ever built an FDL, a lot of the screws drive directly into the plastic and it works totally fine most of the time, except sometimes you can strip them out if you're too, uh, too heavy handed with it. So this I used a lot of captive nuts um, and I also used these little heat set inserts where you take like a soldering iron and you kind of drop a insert down into there. So then the screws all screw into either brass or a nut. 
uh, which is really neat. It means that I can actually take any piece off of this and put it back on, take it all apart a bunch of times, um, and put it back together, and none of the holes will ever strip out. Uh, so Pip will actually break down too. The handle is really easy to get off, which is really neat because I think in the future I might want to do like an upside down handle, something where you're holding it and you're firing balls out from underneath. It could also be put onto like a gauntlet or something. I mean, you're kind of looking at, at this part of Pip being the main blaster and anything can kind of attach to it. Um, the same design sort of features all go into pack as well. So this also doesn't have any screws that bite into plastic. So this breaks down to, you have an agitator in the base down here that spins around and it sort of helps the balls drop down into the chamber. And then you have a blower here uh, and this blower is powered also by a crux motor. Uh, Pip also has two crux motors in him as well. The inside of this looks a little like this and then you have an impeller that looks like this. And this just creates a centrifugal fan here, and it just blows air into the chamber underneath and then out through the hose. So this was an interesting thing to design. The, the, this is a very specific shape here. Um, this is a very specific thing. With the fins that kind of lean one way or the other. How many fins do you use? Um, how do you make sure that air is getting pulled in and not pushed out? Like, this is a really interesting design procedure to make all of this work. So in the bottom also there's a battery tray down here that holds one larger battery. It's like a 2200 milliamp hour battery, uh, which is bigger than a regular FDL3 because you're powering basically two things. Um, from there, uh, you have a acrylic tank. In between the base of the blower and the top, there's actually two gaskets that I printed out of flexible filament. You could actually get any different size of tank to go on here, like this could feasibly be four feet tall instead of two or whatever. Um, it's a screw-off lid, all right, and that's all printed. Again, there is a flexible filament gasket on the inside of there. It's really easy to open and close, really easy to fill. Uh, you have straps on the back. Yeah, so I'm really happy with how it came out, and I know what you all are waiting for, and that's a firing demonstration, and let's get to that. Before we do that, um, I need to put Pit back together a little bit here. So I want to give a special shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. We really appreciate you guys helping us out during the time that we were down. Without your support, this project probably wouldn't have happened, um, and this was a really awesome learning experience for me, and... I think a lot of the things that were learned on creating Pip and Pack um, are going to go into future designs, either of blasters or other things or whatever happens in the future. There was a lot that was learned and taken away from this whole thing. All right, so let's get Pip hooked up again. Put the hose on. Do it. On the back. It's really cool. It's nice and sturdy, like it stays against your back really well. Come on, you got one switch that powers on the pack and pip. On pip there are two knobs. One is your speed knob, so you can turn it down. Uh, your other knob is your burst knob. Your blasters may go to 10, but this one goes to 11. So the, uh, the numbers that it turns to is the burst. Um, it's kind of silly with a pack like this to have like a single fire thing. Um, you can do that. Right, we're shooting one shot at a time, but really it makes more sense to do like three or four. Uh, you could go up to like maybe seven or eight, uh, but when you turn it all the way to eleven, you get the full monty.
that's that. Cool, so as you can see, Pip and Pack works pretty awesome. Um, a couple of little specs, so Pip hits approximately 135 to 145 FPS. Um, that's kind of right at the, like the tip of the range of kind of effective uh, HIR performance. Um, you get beyond that and the balls are so small and floaty it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, you know, in terms of rate of fire, you're looking about 13 to 14, I haven't measured this specifically, balls per second. Um, so it does the thing really well. Uh, I wanted to take one last minute too, and like I really believe in attribution where attribution should be given. Um, naturally, a lot of this comes from the Proton Pack, right? The, the original idea came from the Proton Pack. Um, and I really wanted like my own version. Uh, it's sort of taken Luke a long time. He has a full, you know, business that he runs and everything. It takes a long time for him to design things. Um, I got a little impatient. But I also just like wanted my own thing and I wanted to put my own spin on it and I really knew that this could evolve into something really cool. Um, from the Proton Pack, a lot of people have done a lot of different designs. Uh, the acrylic tube in particular, um, there's a guy, Sean, from Blaster Core. Uh, he was building a Proton Pack that was made to look like the Splatoon thing. Um, it's a video game where you shoot like paint and stuff um, so he kind of came up with the idea to use like a clear tube like this um, so that was a really cool idea uh, you know and then I took it kind of one step and I coupled it together and had the gaskets on either side and stuff um, Taruk Maktau, um I talked to him a lot he did a lot of work back in the day with rival stuff gravity fed hoppers and things like that I had a lot of great conversations with him about how to get things to work kind of better um, so it's really cool. Like it's a project like this doesn't come from just one person. It always comes from multiple people, and this was a really good example of that. A lot of the FDLs I kind of designed in my own little cave. Uh, a lot of this I did that too, but I also took a lot of help and advice from different people with a lot of knowledge. So it's a really cool. Thank you to you guys, and again, thank you to the patrons, uh, and thank you guys for watching. And take care and make on.